why some artists cover their faces. Let's ask our top 100 DJ. Let the journey begin with Electro Vessel by Vesbros. Hello guys, welcome back to Electro Vessel Talk. Christmas is around the corner, that's why we changed our angle to this angle. And for today's interview, we have a very special guest. Yeah, Pink, Pink Panda. Panda. Put your hands together. Hey man, how you doing? I'm doing great man, how about you? <laughs> I'm very well. First of all, why you guys choose to perform with masks? It was a combination of things. We always wanted the, the brand to be really successful, but we never wanted to be famous, like have our faces recognized. That definitely played a part. We like our kind of privacy and we like other acts that have come before, you know, Daft Punk and, and, and DJs like this. We love uh, the mystery. So that was, that was really attractive for us. And also we kind of wanted something that was maybe just, you know, kind of iconic. That, that kind of meant something. This is kind of why we um, uh, we were drawn to the idea of the panda and pink panda, just because it's kind of, it's a cool image and it kind of speaks to like equality and kind of inclusiveness, you know, it's kind of, it's just very kind of unique. It's, yep. it's black, white, and then we want to put a flash of color in it with the pink and it was a kind of natural thing, really. It just kind of evolved. That was the, the first mask did you use or you change it over your career? Yeah, so so the masks we're wearing now, like uh, up till now, we actually produce, design, and, and make our own masks. The first ones actually were more like like cuddly toy masks, and this was something that um, we we had designed uh, for us, but actually <laughs> was totally unpractical. Yeah, for one, like the the vision was like really bad. Uh, we had no like peripheral vision, just a very small. Thing to see out of and they were they were so hot the first ever gig we did uh, wearing the big kind of cuddly mask okay, uh, okay. Was, was actually a gig in Bahrain and it was 40 degrees wow, um, wow. <laughs> and we did we did two hour set outside with no air conditioning and, and by the end we were like passing out and fainting and <laughs> shit wow. yeah. yeah and then we we looked we, we wanted to do something modern we liked the idea of having like sharp kind of cut lines. We worked with a designer and um, and we, yeah, we produced them ourselves with a 3D printer. Yeah, we're really, we're really happy with them now, actually. Oh, great. Did you put the fan inside? Because I can imagine how hot it could be when you are performing. There, there is, um, I mean- Really, we, okay. We, yeah, only a, only a small one. The second design of masks that we, that we use, we actually put like plastic kind of glass eyes and the fan was quite weak. So you would get really hot and actually the eyes would completely mist up. <laughs> Whoa. Then we had like the black steel um, that you can see through and the, the new versions we designed about two years ago, they were they work really well, but the fan is still very small and, and they do get hot. Anything after about an hour performing because we're, we like to be really physical on stage. Like, yeah, yeah. Another thing, a re really cool thing about the mask is you put it on and it kind of, it enables you to kind of perform, you know, like almost like a cartoon character. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, so it kind of, it makes you like, you have to do, you know, you want to kind of do that body language and really be energetic yeah. and bring that energy to the stage. But yeah, after an hour, it gets kind of hot, but we're, we're, we're actually in designing uh, the next one, which is going to be similar, but just um, a, a much better design, better cooling system. Yeah, there's a we've got a few secrets on the next mask that it's going to be really, okay. really oh. Can't wait to see that, yeah. man. I would love to see it, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be awesome. It should be, um, it should be way better. We should be able to do longer sets as well and have it on for longer. So okay. it's gonna, it, it's gonna help the performances definitely as well. So if you want to say in like one or two sentences a message behind your mask, what will be that message? The message behind the mask is creativity, okay. mystery, inclusivity. It's, it's something that represents. Uh, we hope everyone can connect. Uh, wh yeah, whether yeah, you're true. whether you're male, female, any country in the world, whoever you are, hopefully it's something that you know you can be inspired by and have fun with. There are other artists that are thinking to use mask maybe to perform. What do you think will be the advantages? Definitely, it's a strong brand. I remember in the beginning, even though 
some people still see it um, like a gimmick, but it's whether you like it or you don't like it, I think people remember it. Obviously, there's a huge market out there, you know, a very competitive market for DJs now. Um, and I think anything that could help you stand out and, and be remembered is, is a positive thing. Wait a minute. Have you subscribed to our channel? Do it now. Do it. And, and do you think, is there any disadvantages about this? I think so, not so much now, but in the past, we've been Pink Panda now wearing masks and DJing for um, nearly eight years. And I think in the beginning, we had to work harder um, to get respect, uh, to prove that, you know, we were serious producers and serious yeah. artists and serious DJs and performers. I think sometimes maybe that was the main disadvantage. Some people would look at it and think it's, it's a gimmick or it's not serious or something. So, yeah, yeah. But I, I think over the years now we've kind of we've proved that, and there's really not many disadvantages now. We kind of we've grown to really love it, and it's you know it's part of us. It's who we are. So. And what do you think uh, that being not recognized in the public that is advantages or disadvantages? <laughs> Um, definitely for me personally and, and, my, and my partners in the collective, it's it's an advantage for us. We love the idea like when we go to um, uh, industry events and like parties and stuff like this, we can be in the room and, you know, unless we introduce ourselves, no one really knows who we are and we quite like that. Okay. <laughs> it's um, on, only our friends, like, you know, like you guys, people that we connect with and we get to know, um, you know, I'm sure we'll meet in the future and um, yeah, it's kind of nice, definitely. you know. It's, it's one of those yeah. things, if you, if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, man, can you tell us more about your guest mix? We've been working really hard, obviously, through COVID. Uh, myself and the other producer, you know, mainly home, we've had so much time. So we, we've been spending a lot of time producing new music. I think we made maybe 15, 16 tracks, maybe since like, maybe up like March, April. Yeah. And then we went through and picked the 10 of our favorite ones. And we're... Yeah. We've actually com compiled them and we're going to be releasing them early 2021 as two five-track EPs. Yeah, so the, the EP is called Plan Perfect and we've collaborated with a lot of different artists and um, mainly actually Chinese artists. And because we spent a lot of time in China uh, the past couple of yeah. years, we, we've really met a lot of really talented producers and DJs. So it's been really cool making different kind of music with them, um, kind of different tempos. We've got tracks on there that, you know, 124, 125 BPM, kind of oh, more great. kind of big, big room house kind of vibes as, as you can hear on the yeah. guest mix. But then we, we loved kind of experimenting and working with like faster BPMs as well. We've got like some trap kind of dubstep kind of feel records on there, like 140. And then we've got some big kind of hard style tracks at 150 as well. You guys are actually the first guys to ask us for a guest mix since we produced all this music. So it was a great opportunity for us. It's the first time actually we got all the tracks and just mixed them all together. So I can imagine uh, there should be a lot of IDs in it, right? Yeah, it's it's all IDs. There's, there's a lot of tracks from the EPs, but there's even a couple that still haven't got a name and uh, will probably be, you know, for later next year for release. Um, but, but tracks that we really love. That will be our pleasure, man, to, that you choose our radio to play all your new songs. Yes, thank you very much, bro. <laughs> it's, um, it's a, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for, uh, for asking us. You're welcome. And for last question, uh, we want to uh, ask you about your experience in 2020. This year was very a strange year, of course, for anyone. So what was your experience in 2020 and what are your plans for 21? It was really it was really strange, actually, because we had yeah. um, a huge amount of touring booked in that we were really looking forward to this year, you know, like everyone and I'm sure yourselves. And it was it was such a strange feeling, wasn't it? At the start of the year when everything was just closing down and it was really scary um, at first when, you know, news of the virus and stuff. And I think I think the main thing this year, you know, it's been great to have time, a little bit of time off, like to, to be around the family and to not be touring. We've been touring quite heavily for the last kind of three, four years. So it's been, although it's been strange and, it, and we really miss uh, the performing side, it's been really nice actually just to, just to kind of 
be around our families and just to be making music. It's been a very simple way of living. One, one really cool thing for us was one of our collective actually moved to China. Uh, to Beijing uh, about a year and a half ago when we started getting quite busy with bookings in China. He's living out there now. So when, when China opened up again uh, about three, three, four months ago, he's been out there doing the you know Pink Panda shows. It's been really, really cool for him. And, you know, the, the other of us have been really jealous watching him out there performing and stuff. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's, been, it's been great. You know, that's really kept us going, I think, watching... Uh, the fans out there still enjoying uh, the performances when, you know, we're really nowhere, nowhere else in the world, you know, that's possible yet. But I think uh, next year, we're really, really excited. Um, we had some big changes uh, in the last couple of months. We changed management uh, and signed um, to sorted management. And, you know, it's crazy to be alongside like other artists, you know, like Dash and, and Zondeling Hardwell, you know, it's such an amazing yeah, sure, yeah. company. The plans they have for us next year are like just blowing our minds. So we're just, we're gonna just enjoy December, enjoy Christmas. And I think, you know, as soon as hopefully the vaccines kind of kick in and, and we can start traveling again next year, maybe spring, summer, we just, we just want to get back to performing and doing what we love, you know? Yeah. Okay, man. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you, Vespros, man. Thank you, guys. Thanks again. Yeah, Take care, yeah. man. Take care. Bye bye. So, choosing a mask is just a matter of a personal taste. Someone feels comfortable to play with masks, some may don't. Someone likes to be famous, maybe, and be in front of camera and people recognize him or her face, and some other may don't. So, see what do you like and decide for your career. Until next time, this is Vespros.